Tonight, a multi-million dollar drug haul nabbed in the state's far west and what's behind a spate of power blackouts in Port Augusta. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening, great to have your company. Also tonight, preparations ramp up ahead of the blessing of the fleet in Port Pirie this weekend. First though, two men have been arrested after they were allegedly caught with 11 kilograms of crystal meth in Nundru, two hours west of Sejuna. Police say the haul has a street value of $11 million and was detected in a joint operation aimed at targeting drugs headed for the eastern seaboard. Jason Kemp has more. Patrols here in the state's west swooped on a vehicle on Saturday night, uncovering the 11 kilograms of ice after receiving information from both Western Australian Police and the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission. Police arrested two male occupants, both aged 29, both from New South Wales. The bust occurred in Nundru, a small town west of Sejuna. This is an extremely large find and uh, it is great that the local police from Yalata and Penong were able to locate these two very quickly after being provided the information. Patrols closed in on the pair after spotting their SUV on the air highway. Officers then conducted a search, locating the drugs with an estimated street value of $11 million. The pair were then taken to Sejuna, where they were charged with possessing a large commercial quantity of a controlled drug. Police believe both men intended to transport the drugs from WA across the country to New South Wales, the seizure part of Operation Vitreous. This shows that this coast-to-coast -coast operation was able to be done very quickly. SA Police is continuing its investigation with interstate agencies to uncover who exactly the drugs were intended for. We are forever looking at uh, the criminal activities of syndicates that uh, want to deal within drugs and uh, put the community at risk. The two men appeared in the Elizabeth Magistrates Court via video link from Sejuna and will be remanded in custody until they face court again in Adelaide in November. Jason Kemp reporting there. It's been revealed Port Augusta residents have undergone six separate power outages in the last month, affecting up to 1,600 customers at any given time. SA Power Network says among the causes, an increase in flocks of birds. In the later weeks of August, Port Augusta was thrown into darkness a total of six times. An inconvenience SA Power Networks is blaming on damaged power structures. There's been a problem with a sensor that responds to faults on the line and that's been causing the outages. We've isolated that and we'll replace that sensor but we're hoping that the service will go back to normal. The outages occurred from the 22nd to the 30th of August and SA Power Networks says lightning also played a part. Crews have initially had tracked down uh, some problems with uh, insulators where insulators had been damaged by lightning strikes and had failed. They say a flock of birds left 700 Port Augusta customers without power on the 23rd after a flock took off, swinging a line into another and triggering an outage. A faulty sensor caused an outage last Wednesday, leaving 1,600 residents without power. We can't uh, guarantee that a truck won't run into a pole or we won't get a tree fall on lines in the future, but We've, we think we've isolated the cause of these particular run of outages. We apologise for the inconvenience and uh, hopefully we've at least uh, dealt with this issue. SA Power Network says residents should be prepared for blackouts ahead of bushfire season. In a situation where there's maybe extreme weather coming or there's bushfire uh, around, people, it's, we'd suggest that people actually keep their mobile phones and iPads charged so they can keep in contact and be able to get communications to understand what's happening and to get advice on what they should be doing to respond to certain situations. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. New South Wales opposition leader Luke Foley has made a special visit to Broken Hill and the far west region. The opposition leader talked water, calling on the state government to visit the city and listen to the people. Joined by his fellow Labor colleagues, the state opposition leader had some stern words for his opposition. And I'm appealing to the Premier to do what I've done, respond to the Lord Mayor's invitation, come to Broken Hill, go to Wilcannia, go to Menindee, do what I've done, listen to the people of the far west. This is a bloody big issue. Mr Foley says before the Murray River to Broken Hill pipeline starts construction, locals need to know how much they're going to pay. The people of the far west have had their water stolen from them. This is theft, pure and simple. And I'm supporting the call of the Mayor and the City Council to put a moratorium on the 
Wentworth to Broken Hill Pipeline until the community gets some proper answers from the state government. While visiting communities in Wilcannia and Menindee, Labor voiced their support for the council's push for an in-depth judicial review into the water theft allegations raised in July. He says the current inquiry is basically the government investigating the government. A fair dinkum, proper judicial inquiry presided over by a judge with Royal Commission powers. Nothing less is needed to get answers for the people of Broken Hill and the far west of New South Wales. Mr Foley further enforced his commitment to the region, promising that if Labor wins the 2019 state election, the party will upgrade the pipeline between Broken Hill and Menindee at a cost of around $180 million. An upgraded pipeline means Broken Hill could continue to source its water from the Menindee Lakes. Five to six billion dollars coming from a transfer of the Snowy Hydro. Plough them into regional New South Wales because, by God, regional communities need these investments. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Police are calling for a witness to come forward after a teenager allegedly assaulted a woman in Port Augusta. Officers say it took place between the Port Augusta courts and the rail yard at 5.30pm on Sunday when the woman was approached. Police say they'd like to speak with a woman aged in her 20s who was nearby at the time. The 16-year-old boy was arrested and charged with assault with intent to commit rape. He was refused bail and will appear in court later this month. Anyone who has information on the incident is urged to call Crime Stoppers. Liberty One Steel and the MFS have spent the day monitoring the condition of a molten steel ladle which was involved in an incident this morning. MFS crews were called to the Wyala Steelworks where it's understood the ladle became jammed. Firefighters have been monitoring the condition while Liberty One Steel has spent the day working on safely removing it. No one was injured in the incident. Still to come in tonight's local news, scientists mystified over a sudden boom in Wyala's cuttlefish population. Details next. Welcome back. A Middle Eastern agriculture company has put its 11 cropping farms on the Air Peninsula on the market. Hassard's purchase less than five years ago was met with unease from local farmers who say they should have been approached to purchase the land first over foreign buyers. For generations, the Glover family has farmed on the Air Peninsula, their harvest proving essential to agriculture in the region and their livelihoods. In 2013, Peter Glover and his family nervously watched on as neighbouring farms were bought by an Australian company backed by Middle East investment. There's a degree of angst to do with that whole purchase. The 11 prime farming properties spread across Cummins and Ungarra were part of an extensive corporate buy-up, leaving local farmers without say. And I'm Amount of bad feeling of how the the way the deal happened in the first place that uh, local people didn't have the opportunity to get involved. But this week, only four years since the land was first purchased, the farms are now back up for sale. Peter Chalor, the member for Flinders and local grain producer, says he wasn't surprised to hear the farms back on the market. The advantage of family farms over corporate farms is that when they need to tighten the belt, they certainly can do that. Hassad's decision to sell their South Australian properties is already gaining foreign interest, creating anxiety amongst locals. In an ideal world, then, that land would be owned by local uh, Air Peninsula growers. Mr Chalor says there's now an ample opportunity for locals to back the region. Historically, there's been a lot of foreign investment into Australia. I guess it's more difficult when it's close to home. But the reality is these properties are about to come back on the market. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Wyala's cuttlefish population has seemed to have bounced back from the brink of extinction, with the annual population survey recording a strong number this year. Locals and scientists are both pleased with the findings, but say they're at a loss as to what's behind the comeback. Five years ago, residents in Wyla feared they'd lost the cuttlefish forever, with numbers dwindling below 20,000. But today, some good news. This year has followed on from last year, which was the best year we've had for about 20 years. Uh, this year is nearly as good. 
The survey shows a slight dip in the amount of animals recorded compared to last year. However, the population remains strong, increasing by nearly a thousand percent in the last five years. But Dr. Mike Steer says they're scratching their heads as to why that's happened, but says warmer weathers and an improvement in food sources could be helping. If they're developing in warmer temperatures, or as the temperature starts to increase, they've got a better chance of, of uh, survival. The growth has been a boon for Wyla, with divers from across the world making the trip during winter. Documentary makers from Europe have also visited the area to capture these unique creatures. Social media that uh, is so important here. We've got um, the best uh, turnout uh, of visitors that I've ever seen. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. The group behind a campaign to build a solar thermal power plant in Port Augusta has celebrated its success. It comes as Solar Reserve begins to advertise for the first round of jobs ahead of the plant's construction in March. Celebrations for a tireless six-year effort. Repower Port Augusta held a night to recognise those involved in the success of their six-year campaign, a solar thermal power plant for Port Augusta. Yeah, it was a fantastic buzz to sort of just sort of sit back and, and, and uh, enjoy the experience of, of having worked so hard for so long and, and actually got the result we were hoping to get. Senator Nick Xenophon attending the event congratulating the group's effort. Uh, yeah, he was very pleased that... Uh, that, that we've got the result and is, is also uh, pretty keen to sort of uh, keep sort of following up. The group celebration coincided with the advertising of the first round of jobs at the power station. It's just, I mean, it's just the beginning, isn't it? I mean, I think they've, they've um, recently advertised for um, two positions in Port Augusta and a number in Adelaide. Um, and uh, I think that they're gearing up that this will be one of many solar thermal projects around Australia. Now the campaign group has done its job. The group says the reins of opportunity are now in the hands of the Port Augusta community. This is one of many renewable opportunities in this region and we need to get ourselves organised. So the tradies and the, the construction companies need to get organised together to make sure that they can tender and, and work, be part of this construction. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The Port Piri Italian community is busy preparing for tonight's celebration of the blessing of the fleet with the first of many church services. The week of celebrations will be capped off with Sunday's procession through town combined with the grand opening of the redeveloped foreshore. The first of many blessings. The much-anticipated celebrations of Blessing of the Fleet begins tonight ahead of a week packed with events. The three-night tritium, uh, uh, followed by the Blessing of the Fleet debutante ball on Saturday. Praying for those who venture out to sea and that they return safely. Celebrating the Blessing of the Fleet is an important event on Port Pirie's historical calendar. We'll continue in the years to come and we won't lose... The heritage. These streets will come to a halt on Sunday when hundreds escort the Lady of Martyrs to the boat ramp. We will be having the Bliss and the Fleet Festival in conjunction with the Port Piri Regional Council in celebrating the redevelopment of our $3.4 million foreshore development. We're going to be showcasing this whole new um, grass area, so lots of activity on there, and then lots of food stalls with the, the producers' markets. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. When we return after the break, an underdog takes out the Madigan Best and Fairest medal. Stay with us. Welcome back. Broken Hills Silver City Cinema is one step closer to installing a much-needed chairlift, thanks to a generous donation from the town's Democratic Club. Teaming up with the Benevolent Society, the two groups raised a combined $30,000 to help cover the cost of the chair, which will be installed in the front of the cinema. Well, we've got a lot of people in our, um, in our membership base, as well as the community, that are either disabled, not able to walk, elderly, etc. Um, and that's a big portion of our membership base, so we wanted to be able to help. South Augusta came out strong at last night's Manigan medal count, which sees the Upper Spencer Golf Footy League name its best and fairest players. Rachel Nell reports. 
South Augusta thrived with talent this year and it showed in the medal count results. Two players voted into the top three, which led to fresh-faced underdog Darcy Kilday taking out this year's Madigan medal by just three points. I thought my uh, co-player Matthew Downey, the Ruckman, would win, but um, I, he finished third, I finished first. It's a good day for South Augusta. Not afraid of a tackle, Kilday has been recognised for his fierce contest in this year's competition. Our most brilliant play in the Spencer Gold Football League. Staying true to himself, Kilday has one more request for the Upper Spencer Golf football officials. A fantastic league. Um, I wish they'd get rid of Sunday games. And With one of the best turnouts the Madigan medal count has seen in years, event organisers are happy with last night's result. Darcy was my tip, so that's even better. South Augusta are currently sitting on second place on the leaderboard. This award the perfect sweetener to cap off a great year as they prepare to take on top of the table Solomon Town in finals this weekend. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. To more local sport now and there were plenty of netball finals happening around the golf over the past week and a bit of soccer as well. Patrick Reinke joins us now and some new netball champs have been crowned in Port Perry, Pat. Yes, Fraser, as the Spencer Golf Footy Leagues come to a close, so does the netball. Both Port Piri and Wyala crown new A-grade champions over the weekend in two very close games. In Port Piri, and it was Solomon Town clenching the premiership over Blue Wren. Solly was just that little bit better on the day, winning by four goals. Over in the Steel City, and it was even closer. After winning their do-or-die prelim by just one goal last week, True Blue just couldn't do enough to topple the Warriors. The Warriors got the job done to secure the premiership by three goals. Taylor Breen was named best on court. To Port Augusta and Vikings have set up a grand final showdown against Railways after downing St Joseph's in a seven-goal upset. And in Port Lincoln, way back are straight through to the grand final with a win over Warnilla. Despite the loss, the Rangers will now have a second chance, but will need to defeat Souths United, who are coming off the back of their strong win over Boston. To Port Lincoln Soccer now, and Lincoln Knights have secured the senior premiership with a round to go, after tying with South Coast in a scoreless draw. The Knights now sit at the top of the table with four points separating them and second with a game to play. In the other game, Lincoln City Raiders and Seacole Masters played out a cracking 2 all draw with both sides sharing the points. In the SA Amateur League, Savoy also had a draw against the Eagles. And finally, in Broken Hill Tennis, there were some close contests. Four hands just managed to get over Volley's two sets 22 games to two sets 18 games. My Top Spins also had a tight win over backhands 224 to 219. And Swallows had an easier night, downing drop shots 326 to 119. So, Fraser, still more netball grand finals to come, and still plenty of footy, soccer, and tennis as well. Thank you, Pat. Patrick Reinke there. Do stay with us after the break at check of the local weather. Welcome back to the weather now. Some wet parts around the region today. Port Lincoln and Port Pirie both copping some rain, tops of 15 and 16. Fine elsewhere though, Wyala a top of 17. Wet and windy in Adelaide, just 14 degrees the max. Cloud over the southeast of our state along with unstable winds is generating showers and storms. Skies are generally clear elsewhere under a broad high pressure system. On the waters, westerly winds between 15 and 20 knots, seas at two and a half metres with a south southwesterly swell. Sunrise just after half past six, sunset at 6.03, and it's a full noon. Tomorrow, a mixed bag right across the region. Port Augusta, sunny and 18 degrees. Cloud about in Wyala, 17. Showers for Woodner, Clare and Kadena. Temps in the mid to low teens. Fine elsewhere, 17 in Broken Hill, a wet day for Adelaide, just 15 the top. On the forecasts, showers will clear in Port Lincoln by the end of the week, 15 with some cloud on Saturday. Sunny for the rest of the week in Woodner, 18 the top on Friday. Remaining mostly fine with just some cloud across the week in Wyala. Sunny skies for Port Augusta, 20 for Thursday. Showers over the next couple of days in Kadena, but it should clear by Friday. 
remaining mostly fine across the week in Port Pirie, although some showers on Friday. Rainy in Clare, just 12 on Friday, remaining, remaining fine rather for the rest of the week in Broken Hill, although just 15 and 16 degrees for Friday and Saturday. And that is the local news this evening. Don't forget you can stay up to date on Facebook and Twitter. You can also drop us an email. I'm Fraser Goldsworthy from the Southern Cross News team. Enjoy your evening. Good night. Thank you.